Mark Sargent, Herschel 36, Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. How the devil are you, sir? I cannot complain at all. <laughs> all right, listen, I, tell, tell the listeners who you are, what you do, and why it is you are famous. Okay, uh, my name is Mark Sargent. I am currently the tip of the spear when it comes to the Flat Earth Movement. And uh, this thing, which I've been doing for the last uh, 13 months now, and it has been growing like a weed and become way this become this kind of this secret viral thing where there's so many people that know about it, but so many so many people don't talk about it to each other because they're not sure if anyone else knows. So it's kind of it's kind of mentioned in whispers. But for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, it's how do you know that you live on a globe? Who told you? Because you don't know because you found out by yourself, and that usually upsets a whole, whole bunch of people. Uh, Listen, buddy, it's a hornet's nest. It's a real hornet's it's, nest. I am getting absolutely destroyed, left, right, center, <laughs> and I'm not even a flat earther. I mean, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm talking about things like chemtrails oh. and i get absolutely oh. annihilated online i'm a fruitcake i'm a nut nut everything and i you know i'm filming these planes come across the sky they go zigzag but they start about quarter past seven they go across the mediterranean and they keep crossing and all of a sudden by 11 half past 11 12 o'clock latest we've got a film across the sky chemtrails i know that's not your thing but have you any 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 thoughts on chemtrails uh, I know that they're real, uh, and I know that you know that commercial airliners or pretend commercial airliners or there's something up there spraying. But as far as the purpose, I don't think it's just one thing. Uh, you know, people have people have asked me, you know, is it is are they poisoning us? I go, well, it's not a short term poison, that's for sure, because you don't see people dropping in droves in the fields. Um, could it be genetic alterations? Could it be masking parts of the sky? Could it be all, th you know, could it be mind control? It could it be all three? I, I don't know. Uh, but I do know that they, there is something going on out there. People that say that they're just contrails, uh, they're kidding themselves. I mean, they're hidden as contrails, which is great. You know, that's, that's very clever because most people would just look up and say, oh, yeah, they're contrails. Just like most people would look up and say, oh, yeah, they're satellites. I was like, really? Who told you there were satellites? The same people that told you that the Americans went to the moon? Those guys? Yeah, don't buy it. Well, that's right. This whole thing we, you and I call life is, yeah. is uh, it, it's sadly, I think, uh, masquerading as something that it's not. This is a bit like, uh, you know, I hate to say it, say it, but the Truman Show. We, th there is something going on, and I just don't know what it is. But you yeah. are famous online for the alternative <laughs> or, or for the alternative thinkers some people say you're a shill i know you've got this thing going on with eric debay i think eric debay's yeah. slagging everyone off right yeah uh, he I, is I, I don't i don't know why but there seems to be some major um issues within the alternative media um sector um yeah. you know people falling out left right and center other people saving the world and uh, on we go, you know. Uh, but here we are, right? So yeah. you and I are going to talk about flat Earth, okay. um, and I want to hand you hand it over to you. And you know, I'm not convinced that we live on a flat Earth, but I tell you sure. what, I'm not convinced we live on a ball either. And I've <laughs> also come across flat universe theory, um, and so it gets a little, it gets weirder and weirder the deeper I go down this 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 rabbit hole. Um, and um, I'm also pretty certain, I can't be 100% certain, but I'm pretty certain we did not go to the moon. Okay, I'll hand it, hand it over. Oh, no worries at all. In fact, I, it's funny that you, you contacted me this morning because uh, I was working on a new intro in my head last night before I was drifting off. Uh, because I, what I noticed, because I actually brought this up, you know, uh, we, we celebrated St. Patrick's Day just recently over here in the United States. And so we had a big family dinner. I saw some of my cousins and my aunts and uncles that I had not seen in a long time. And they were asking me what I was doing. I said, oh, yeah, I've, I've kind of been doing this flat earth thing. And as a matter of fact, my book just came out uh, three weeks ago. Uh, called Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit. And I, I showed it to them and they just didn't understand it. And as I was telling them, you know, they, they got angry. And and what I was what I wanted to introduce to people, this is the first time I'm kind of saying this on air, 
is that I've because I'm really going to try to lead in if I ever start doing this from a public st- speaking standpoint, lead in with an apology. And that is this topic is going has a good chance of upsetting you. Uh, if you think of any not just not just conspiracy topics, but think about mainstream controversial topics that that bring about emotions like uh, abortions or stem cells or gay rights or black rights or women's rights or, or take any, anything you want. If you put all those things together and put them in a box, you'd think that'd be you know a pretty a, a pretty pretty big hornet's nest. That does not compare with this topic, and you gotta wonder why. Because this topic should be just ridiculous. People should just wave it off and be like, ah, yeah, don't bother me with that stuff. But instead, people get very, very upset. The people that are listening now, some of you are going to get upset, but are going to start throwing things at the radio and, and saying, you're ridiculous. You're, you're, you're out of your mind. You're stupid. And you got to wonder why. And, and the reason is, is because everything else in our life that we're sure of you know the fire burns water's wet you drop something it falls to the ground that could be called gravity although they don't really know what it is these things these are things you can test right now in your own house but when somebody says how do you know the world is a globe you say well duh we know it's a globe but it's something you're told it's not something you know for yourself as a matter of fact i had a debate with a lot has happened actually since i've talked to you last uh, I got into a debate with a scientist uh, the other month, and I asked him, I go, look, if you had to take the average person on the street, you, a scientist, had to take the average person and convince them that they were on a globe, what would you do? How would you do it? And instead of the knee-jerk reactions, which we always get, it's, oh, we're going to do a curvature, a Coriolis effect, or some sort of gravity test, blah, blah, blah. He goes, you know, that's really interesting. He goes, I don't think I could do it on the ground. I go, he goes, I go, really? He goes, no, I don't think I could convince anybody that we lived in a ball as long as we were on the ground. I could kind of tell him about it, but uh, to prove it, prove it to him, he goes, the only thing I could do is give him $20 million and, and put him on a rocket and put him up in space. And I go, that's right. I go, but that, b- b- so you're basically saying that all the proof is up in space, the people that control space or what we know as space, which is really just, you know, the skies. And he goes, yeah. I go, well, what if they were wrong? You know, what if, what if, this is the, you know, this is a big question that, uh, you know, say, say that 500 years ago, we were told that the earth was a ball and mathematically we worked out all the formulas and we say, yeah, mathematically we're 99.9% sure it's a ball. Well, that's good and all, but until you have a device high enough to take the picture, what do you really know until you get up high enough? And I, I'm, I use a, um, a George Orwell quote nowadays. You remember George Orwell, the guy that wrote uh, 1984, probably one of the most prophetic books since the Bible. Uh, and he said – he wrote an article on Flat Earth, believe it or not, back in 1946. And he said – he goes, you know, it's really interesting. You ask people if, if they live on a globe, how, they, how do they know? And they say, well, everybody knows. Why, why would you even ask such a thing? And then you press it and then they start to get angry. And he thought that was really, really interesting because we didn't even have jet planes in 1946. You know, NASA wasn't formed until 1958. So how did people know, know in 1946 that they lived on the globe? It's because they took somebody else's word for it. And that's the question I've been putting to people since uh, February of 2015, which is – how much faith do you have in science? Now, if you're a religious person, you're really kind of on the fence about science because, yeah, they give you air conditioning and light bulbs and smartphones and all the cool things. But you got to remember, most of their money was made off the uh, the industrial, the military industrial complex, you know, making weapons. And when it came to civilian stuff, they made a, they made a lot of mistakes over the years, big mistakes, uh, you know, like lead paint. Uh, you know, lead, uh, lead gasoline, DDT, uh, asbestos, you know, to just to name a few, you know, some really horrible mistakes. And, you know, so when science makes mistakes, they generally don't tell people unless there's money involved, unless there's a class action lawsuit, unless people start dying. So if science figured out in the 1950s, that the world that they've been pushing – remember, because the globe has been you, – you know it was a globe because it, you, it sat in your classroom since you were six years old and, and followed you throughout school. If they were wrong, would they tell people? And the, the argument, if you, you're still not getting it, uh, I'll give you the, the quick version, which is um, – I could sum it up really in one sentence, which is Raiders of the Lost Ark. And you're thinking, why would you bring up a movie from 1981 with Harrison Ford? You know, it, it's because it's a very telling 
movie about science, uh, you know, directed by Steven Spielberg, where they were looking for the Ark of the Covenant and they were fighting it. You know, the British and the Americans and the Nazis, everyone's dying trying to fight over the Ark of the Covenant. Who's getting the Ark? Who's getting the Ark? Well, who got the Ark in the end? The Americans did. And the very – what I thought was most interesting, even when I was young, I, most interesting about that entire movie was when the Ark was found, what happened in the last 60 seconds of that movie? The Ark was found. It was put in a cardboard box and it was put in a warehouse and it was hidden from the public forever because it went against science. Plain and simple. That's what this is all about and that is when, when science – science is great. Science is wonderful. Science makes all the things we know and love. But if science finds something or if discovers something that goes against science, you are going to never see it because uh, it, it, it contradicts their beliefs. And if it reinforces religion, again, no offense to anybody that, out there that, uh, that's not into – doesn't follow a religious belief uh, like the big five, the, uh, it, it, they, the science will, will bury it. And I mean deep. They're, they will never show it to you. And so that's what this premise supposes. And that is if science discovered that the Earth wasn't actually a sphere, I mean not even close to being a sphere, but something way, way, way different, would they tell the general public? Uh, and everything that I dug into, all the research that I did, and even, you know, even now, 13 months later after I made the clues, uh, no, no, they wouldn't because they can't. Because uh, um, it's it's like it's like shooting yourself in the foot. You're uh, not going to do it. Okay, let, a lot of information there. So we just. I know, I know. Uh, I go on okay, rambles. Okay, we, uh, okay. 1984. Um, George Orwell. I think his yes. real, real name is Eric Blair. Um, yep. it, there's there's three books of interest. 1984, Clockwork Orange, and the other one I it leaves me. I can't remember the name of the other book that I'm trying to think of. But there there are there are three books that that kind of predicted the way that life was going to be for us in the future, and we are now in the future. As an example, yeah. in one of those books, they were talking about something that, which, which was very close to the internet. Um, and uh, I, I think it might have been 1984. But what you're talking about is, um, is the idea that we have been lied to on a massive scale. Yes. Um, and if we look at like small things like 9-11, okay, for me, clearly, um, Bin Laden didn't uh, fly two planes into the Twin Towers. Um, and if, if he did, how come did, did, did uh, Tower 7 come down? And that's what started me thinking, but this is kind of odd. And then when you look at the Federal Reserve and you understand that the Federal Reserve isn't federal and that money doesn't have any true value, all of a sudden you're thinking, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going through an education system to, to be in a position where I can earn lots of money. And they've yeah. kind of taken this need to, for, for gold and precious metals away from us and pushed us into um, currency exchange. And that currency has no, no inherent value. And we're likely, I think, to head into um, inflation and hyperinflation to devalue um, the currency that we do have. And we're heading towards, I think, a feudal system. Okay, But that yeah. doesn't say that um, we live on a flat plane. Okay. No. Uh, yep. You know, but we have been lied to. There were no weapons of mass res mass destruction. Um, Iraq had nothing to do with 9/11. Libya again wasn't attacking its own people. Um, the same accusations are being said about Assad that he's attacking his own people, um, and so it goes on and on and on. So we yeah. are being lied to. We have been lied to. And I studied history um, from school all the way through to A levels, and it's very clear to me now that. Um, the history that I was taught is and was and will always be a lie. But that doesn't mean we live on a flat earth. But you are correct. I grew up with a ball in the schoolroom and I, a, a ball earth. And I, I've been told that um, I, I, I live on a ball earth. Um, uh, and but but let, can I can I chime in real yeah, quick yeah, here because yes, you, yes, you, made, you made some excellent points there and that is look everyone knows that we've been lied to Napoleon you know as as much as the everyone has the T-shirts that say history is written by the winners there's a better one than that and that is one from Napoleon who said that history is just lies that are agreed upon 
And the Americans especially, we lie about everything. I mean, we don't I, all the major events in our history, every especially the big wars, you know, if if people think that you aren't lied to, um, you know, look at look at the American Civil War, uh the Spanish American War, the Mexican American War, the Vietnam War. We will lie for just about anything. I'll I'll give you a perfect example. Um uh, for money, we'll, we'll especially lie, of course. Men men lie all the time for money. Um, most people don't know. I, I came up with this one on my own. That is the Panama Canal. And people say the Panama Canal is not a conspiracy. I go, no. I go, uh, think of the biggest architectural project you can think of, like the, like the Hoover Dam. Big, big thing, right? You know how many people died during the Hoover Dam construction of it? Less than 100, maybe 70. Do you know how many people died, how many Americans died making the, the Panama Canal, which was really just digging a big ditch? The better part of 6,000. And you're thinking, wow, that's quite a bit. I didn't know that. But then I say, well, they died of yellow fever and malaria. And then you say, well, of course, you know, that's that's expected. You know, that's that's not a big deal. You know, with mosquitoes are down there. They, it's not like they knew they were going to get all die from mosquito bites. And I go, really? Because the Americans didn't start the, the Panama Canal. The French did. And the French, because all the tools were still down there when the Americans got there, all the French tools. The French lost 21,000 men trying to dig the Panama Canal. So you take the Americans, the Americans had to invent mosquito netting to go down there. The point was, is that you're, you're saying, why, who, who, how is this a conspiracy? The point was, the Americans knew full well we were going to lose thousands of men, probably upwards of 10,000. And, uh, you know, the French, when they lost 21,000, there were so many protests in the streets, they had to abandon it. They were just, uh, you know, they were just dropping like flies. But the Americans sent, these weren't military, this was sent civilians, they sent 6,000 men to die for what was essentially a toll road and you say well what's your point my point is if you're willing to wipe out and that's by the way the 6,000 men that's the combination of Pearl Harbor and the World Trade Center combined if you believe the numbers and if anyone that's willing to send that sort of manpower down there sacrifice that sort of men for really uh, uh, what was it? ended up being a toll road yeah it's a military choke point but we didn't send military down there anyone that's willing to do that is willing to do anything for money and resources. So don't think for a second that that you can't that, that you can't be lied to on a grand grand scale. Uh, you know, even even when the Americans, I know you know you're over there in, in Spain, but the Americans going to the moon. Uh, yeah, look, and I'm I'm from the United States. Yeah, I was born and raised here. Uh, it's a matter of national pride. We were all very very happy about that. But why wouldn't you lie about you know if you could fake the moon mission? Why not fake it? You know, you get you get national pride and you, you get all these wonderful things, these kudos, and people say, oh, look at America. Look what they've done. But the, big, the bigger question is why did they do it? Because it's still a lot of money just to say you put a flag on the moon and then scare everybody off so nobody else goes there and plants their own flag. Uh, and that's what this kind of turned into. That answered – this answered a question for me that had burning, been burning for the last 10 years. Which was why? Why fake something that big? Why spend that much money on a fake rocket program? When uh, wh wh what's the motivation? The reason is they don't want you to know. They have to control the skies, and they don't want you to know what's up there. They don't want you to look at the world. Think of how. And I know I'm segueing into this. Please cut me off any time. Think of how many times. I mean. The the Americans had gone to the moon and back and never took a picture. You know, they'd had rockets going since 1957 and did Apollo missions 1 through 17 and never took a picture of the Earth and only took a picture of the Earth on the very last mission, Apollo 17, on the way back in 1972. What took them so long? To take a picture of the Earth. And then that picture they milked for 43 years. It, they didn't even they didn't even bother releasing another full picture of the Earth until just last year. Okay, of, let me jump in there. there at sorry, least, go ahead. But there is one picture. There is one picture of Earth, isn't there? And uh, as far as I can tell, and so uh, that would suggest that the Earth is round. Okay, that one. A, it, that one sphere. Picture. Sure, if you believe the one picture. That's right. But, if you believe it, but that picture doesn't make any sense. If you look at it, it uh, it shows the the bottom part of Africa, and all of Antarctica. If it's, it's a United States space program, why wouldn't you take a picture when the United States or the the Americas are in the shot? Why take this picture of a mostly cloudy Earth? It was like it was not by any standards a good picture, uh, and, and it wasn't indicative of our space program. But more importantly, 
Why did you wait so long? I used the, um, I, I came up with an analogy recently, and I call it the angry wife syndrome. And you'll kind of see where I'm going with this. And that is uh, a wife is, you know, husband and wife are married for 40 years. Husband comes home. The wife says, hey, I'm divorcing you. And she, and he goes, why? And he goes, she goes, well, it's because after 40 years, you've only given me one bouquet of flowers, right? And so what happens the very next day? He, uh, he comes back with a bouquet of flowers, right? And, and he goes, well, now you don't have to, you know, now we, we don't have to get a divorce. Well, you know how the rest of that plays out. She goes, well, what are you talking about? Women know better. It's like, what are you talking about? It, you bring me flowers now? After 40 years, the only reason you brought it is I, because I mentioned it in conversation. That is what the, fo- the photograph was like, which was 43 years, not a single you know, a photograph of Earth. And then all of a sudden in July of 2015, they're going, oh, NASA just says, oh, yeah, by the way, here's a photograph of the Earth. Second blue marble shot we've taken in 43 years. Obama comes on his little press conference about it. Neil deGrasse Tyson tweets it. it NASA tweets it. And it's like, what, now? Now you're bringing it up after we've been harping on you for the last six months that you don't have a picture of the, you know, the Earth from space? What happened all the times before now? Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't count. I. I. I'll. I'll use the angry wife uh, scenario every time if a scientist tries to pin me on it. Anyway, sorry. That's my rant. So no. The. The. the even that one picture from 1972. Utter. Utter fake. Uh, look at all the other stuff that's not there from the Americans that should be there. Um, there is no video. Even today, there is no video of the Earth spinning on its axis from space. Not with the weather morphing. Uh, there is no video of any object leaving orbit or returning into Earth's orbit with the camera running. There is no uh, there is no shot of any astronaut in any mission turning around, doing 180 degrees or better pan around exterior shot with the camera running. Um, there's not even a shot interior from an airlock where, you, you know, we've all seen it in science fiction movies where the astronaut's getting ready to do a spacewalk and the door opens from the airlock. There's not even a shot from inside of there. There's there's such an absence of evidence. It drove me insane when I was when I was looking into this, and and that's where we are now. It's it, we all, but it, but I will give this for NASA. It's clever because there's been so many movies and television shows kind of showing different little spacey things that we've assumed it's always been there. That all the footage has already always been there. But it, whenever it gets to the money shot, whenever it gets to the to the to the crux of the scene, they always cut away or do a computer animation or something. Well, this is very um, this is very true, um, and we've been dominated by Hollywood for the entirety of my life. Um, and the beginning of most films has some form of spinning ball in it, some spinning earth, um, and, and, and that is paramount in my subconscious. So I just naturally believe that we are on a round um, spherical earth, you know? Um, sure, but it, sure. But, but, but it is kind of odd. If I speak to pilots, they will tell me that we live on a round earth. Um, but I would have thought if we if we lived on a round Earth, they would have to tip their nose so it goes around the circumference of the Earth. But I, I, I haven't done the maths, but I have friends who have done flat Earth exper- uh, experiments um, where they've they, they've measured the distance um, between one point and the next next point, and that point should be further down in the eyesight or gone altogether. Um, I think there's a yeah. famous quote about is it Chicago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Chicago, yeah, the the Chicago skyline um, across Lake Michigan. The um, and I've got both the still shots and the time lapse video. The still shots was one thing because you know there's some people say, well, it's refraction and it's a mirage where you're looking at the skyline from fifty between fifty and fifty five miles away. And if you look at the still shot, you say, oh well, it's it's, it's a mirage. It's a superior mirage, even though it's not inverted like a like a, a superior mirage should be. But What's interesting is if you look at the time-lapse video, which is taken from the, the beach, and you're looking at, what, 10, 12, 15 hours, whatever it is, and you can see the skyline. There's weather that goes through. It's not even a sunny day. It's a cloudy day. Uh, you know, it rains, and you can still see the skyline, and it goes dark, and you can see the buildings, and you can even – there's enough detail on it. You can even see the janitor crew is starting from the from the top and working their way down in the buildings, and it's, it's like, okay – uh, you know, you can say one thing about a mirage, but I've never seen a mirage that can that can stand up to uh, to weather, different temperatures, daytime, nighttime, and the mirage still there. Uh, yeah, yeah. But you're you're absolutely right. The um, 
uh, the one of the big things that people can notice is the curve, which is if it is eight inches per mile squared, then that means eight inches times every mile times itself. So if it's two miles, it's two times two, which is four times eight inches, which is 32 inches. Three times three is nine times eight is 72 and so on and so on. And we can see objects way further. They should be over the hill. They should be on the other side of the hill. That's all a cur the curvature of the Earth is, is, a, you know, a slow gradient of a hill. And we can see objects all the time at distances we shouldn't be able to. And I've interviewed people uh, from all branches of the armed forces and professionals and pilots, including Air Force. Uh, and they've all said the same thing, uh, that, that we, that we we're we seeing stuff that we shouldn't be able to. And yet, at the same time, nobody has come back and made a video and c contradicting it, saying this lighthouse at 40 miles away should be below the curvature. And look, I can't see that lighthouse. Therefore, there's curvature. No one's ever come forward and said that. You know, they'll 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 show a couple boats every once in a while where they say, "Look, I only see half the boat," or the the boat's kind of blurring at the bottom. But no one will one will, no one will take a stationary structure and and do that test, and it's uh it's amazing to see. So, yeah, you know, here we are over a year into this thing, and uh, no professional has come forward to uh, scientist or otherwise. The closest we got, the closest we got recently was a geodetic surveyor. Uh, which was interesting because a geodetic surveyor, unfortunately, is like a, an astronomer. His whole life revolves around the Earth being a sphere. And so he says, no, no, he, but he starts with the whole assumption that it is a sphere. He doesn't even get up in the morning if he doesn't think it's a sphere. So there was nothing we could do there. Uh, but the other surveyor that I had that spent 32 years in the middle of the United States working on a lot of big projects like airport runways and shopping malls and car factories, he goes, look, he goes, we're told when we're you know a brand new surveyor to treat the world like it's an absolutely flat plane. That's one of the first things they tell you. They go treat every project like it's a big flat piece of paper, a big flat cracker. And he goes, that's great and all, but you would think with the curvature of the Earth, especially if you're going over 20 miles worth of city, that all these crackers shouldn't be able to line up perfectly because sooner or later you're going to have to deal with the curve, and that just doesn't happen. Uh, just amazing. In fact, I've got I've now have a playlist of testimony shows from from the private and the uh, the military sector, and it's that 13 people so far, and I've got two more lined up. It's crazy. It's it's this thing will not die. No, it won't die, and it has gone absolutely mental on the um, alternative um, press angle. The mainstream press have just belittled it at best, right? Uh, Barack Obama yep. has come up and said, oh, he took, he took the mickey out of the flat, flat earthers. Um, but of course, as we know, uh, politics is Hollywood for ugly people, um, and, Bar and Barack... <laughs> Brack is um, is is in himself, you know. He he's nothing more than a than, than a puppet, uh, as far as far as I'm concerned. Um, and um, and it just seems that we're in. The further I get into this conversation, the more it seems that I'm just in some form of illuminated, blown up bubble by someone else. Yeah. I'm, a, I, I'm a puppet myself, you know. Um, and yeah. you know the, the financial system's rigged. Um, it goes on. The education system is 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 a programming computer system. There's nothing religious about the Catholic Church. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. And I, as you know, you're familiar with Crow Seven Seven. Um, oh, of course. You know, I've, I've I've done a couple of interviews with Crow, and he's really really interesting. Very very deep, and I love that man. Um, and this whole lunar wave thing, and the fact that I don't believe that the moon is uh, a satellite orbiting this planet in the universe, as we're told. I just don't believe that anymore. I used to, but I don't anymore. Um, there, yeah. there, there are history books from, from the Zulus and from especially Dutch history books that, that, that uh, talk about a time when there wasn't a moon in the sky. As an example, yeah, um, and I don't. Yeah. What, what's your opinion on the moon and the sun? Because as soon as you start looking at this topic, you've got to question everything. I look at it um, like the traditional books. You know, I remember I didn't I didn't create flat Earth by any stretch, but the, the sun and the moon, because that's one of the first questions that's come up, is like, well, what do you think about the sun and the moon? I'm saying you're inside a giant structure, a giant planetarium, a um, a Hollywood uh, studio. Which is and the sun and the moon are artificial and they're very very small. So the sun is not 93 million miles away. The moon isn't 237,000 miles away. They're both 
very relatively small objects. So the sun and the moon would be roughly between 30 and 35 miles wide. Um, they're both about the same size, which again, why the moon fits so well in front of the sun during an eclipse. Don't think that's a coincidence. And you're saying, well, it's a coincidence, really, that the, that the moon is 400 times closer than the sun, but it's also 400 times smaller. That's, that's not just a coincidence. Um, and that they're both self-illuminated on top of it. So the sun is just a big incandescent light bulb and the moon is its own light source. Uh, not to quote too much religion on that one, but I mean, people that, that delve into Christianity know what I'm talking about. But th uh, there's there's tests that have been done recently, really spooky tests. In fact, I'm holding one of the uh, digital thermometers right now, which is the moonlight is colder than uh, regular nighttime starlight. And you're saying, what are you talking about? And I'm going, well, you know, everyone knows that, and I'm going to have to use Fahrenheit because I can't do the Celsius conversion over where you guys are. But if it's 100 degrees in the in the sunlight, it's, say, 80 degrees in the shade. We all know this because when you're in the shade, the sun isn't hitting you. But when you're in the moonlight, uh, let's say it's 50 degrees in the moonlight. In the shade, it's actually warmer, upwards of 12, 13 degrees in some cases. And that shouldn't be possible because if the sun is reflecting – I'm sorry, if the moon is reflecting some of the sunlight – then uh, we should be getting some of that radiation through the sun. At the very least, it should be neutral. It should not be colder in the moonlight. But we've done independent tests, and, and anybody can do this. I've been encouraging people to go out and spend 15 bucks and get a digital thermometer, point-and-click little gun, and they're all showing the same thing. Uh, it's always colder, always, always, always. And that shouldn't be possible. You're saying is that doesn't pro prove a flat Earth. I'm going, yeah, it doesn't prove a flat Earth, but it puts into question the moon. And that is, if the moon is self-illuminated, then what has science been telling us all these years? Why are they telling us that the moon reflects the sunlight if it actually doesn't? It's actually generating its own light. And its own light is, is a really spooky kind of light on top of it. So, um, And by the way, I've got to also mention uh, the Crow 777 thing, which I thought was really interesting that you bring him up. Because he is now – now, he's not officially a flat earther, not by any stretch – but he uh, has been going after the um, American space program as well. He's been looking into some of the interior uh, International Space Station footage and and dissecting it and going, look, the edits that these people are using on the interior, he goes, it doesn't make any sense. He goes, these, these guys are lying through their teeth. And, and he still can't figure out why. He suspects, but he's not going to jump on the flat earth bandwagon yet because of the uh, – the controversy and, and all the comments that it generates. So anyway, yeah, sun and the moon, completely artificial. Uh, the moon would be its own display system because the other question that comes up is like, well, how does the moon even do like a half moon or a quarter moon? How does it wax and wane? Uh, how, do, how does a blood moon happen if there's no earth between the, the sun and the moon? And that is because the, uh, the moon literally is its own projection system. It's nothing more than a, than a giant display, a giant monitor. It can display whatever it wants, and it has to because it is not – it doesn't have any relationship to the sun at all. Well, that's very interesting, um, and you are right about uh, Crow. He's ripping into NASA uh, big time. Yeah. He's, just, he's just showing the inconsistencies within the, the, the NASA footage, and then uh, surprisingly enough, people come out and say, well, Crow, you're, you're a shill, um, and so it goes on. Um, but the, 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 the moon and the sun are, are, are two very powerful objects because they, they dominate us day in and day out. Um, yeah. And if this, if this big lie, if we are right and we are being lied to, then those two things must be part of the illusion, um, which would suggest to me that there is someone beyond it that's controlling, um, controlling life as we know it. Would you not agree? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it is going to be tough to be an atheist as this thing keeps growing because if we're in a giant structure, that means that structure was created. And if it's created, there was a creator. Now, is it the divine? You know, it, you know there's really one of only two options here, and that is because if it was created, it was either built by the divine or uh, God subcontracted out the work and somebody else, you know, a higher civilization is – uh, was involved here. I'm not saying you know that God doesn't have some involvement, uh, but you know either way, 
it, there, there, there does seem to be an obligation again to to something that I think science is is really guilty of, and that is um, r- spiritual nourishment, which is if pe- because every all the major religions of this world, you know, um, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, which make up most of the population, you know, they're they've all been looking for something this this artifact of faith, you know, something to to galvanize, to cauterize their their belief in god everybody you know well everybody wants a sign everybody when they pray at some time in their life has said you know god give me a sign that you're around you know that that you're that you're out there that that we're, we aren't just this little speck of dust flying through the universe and uh well this this is that you know this is i mean i'm not saying it's the handprint of god but it's definitely proof of some sort of intelligent design and so I think that's an obligation for for science, and I know it goes against everything they believe in, which is, you know, there's the big battle between religion and science, and and science, if they can't explain it, they don't want to talk about it. Uh, if if they found the evidence that this was a, indeed a structure, they're not going to show us because they they can't answer the question. Science hates that. Uh, and if you think I'm kidding, look up the core of the Earth argument, which is uh, the deepest hole ever drilled. Uh, at least publicly, you know, you don't know about the military, but the deepest hole ever drilled has been eight miles. But science will say, oh, no, we live on a sphere and it's 4,000 miles to the center. But when you open up the textbooks, they know, they show you exactly what they think the, the core of the earth is. You know, it's red and orange and yellow and white and these bands of perfect bands of, of, of heat. And they have names for everything, all, uh, for all of them. And my argument is, okay, uh, if you've only drilled down eight miles, how can you tell what's down there? And they said, well, we use seismic radar, and we, we've got a really good idea. I was going, really? Because you only drilled down eight miles. Uh, you know, until you actually go down there, what do you really know? Uh, so, and and that's the the response to you know that science will never put out a textbook where they show the globe with a big question mark in the middle of it because people hate question marks we're suckers for a mystery and so to avoid all the questions that science can't answer they're just going to put that in there and then they'll say oh yeah we're 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 99 sure that's what it looks like i was like well you're not 100 percent sure no no we're 99 percent sure and you know it's i could go on and on i mean you know these are the same people that you know that went on about evolution and the big bang and you know the question there it's like what happened before the big bang you know and then you just hear crickets so that, that's, I'm, not, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to preach any specific religion. I'm just saying. But it it, it comes to uh, um, the the fact that I'm sitting here at my desk. I'm 43 years of age, and I come to the conclusion that I have been lied to from start to finish. Yeah. Yeah. What, what am I going to yeah. do? Three. What, 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 yeah. I, the, I I will say this: it, it, you've been you've been lied to on on so. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, we don't live our lives and with with horrible lies every day. But yeah, the, the hang on, Mark. Are, hang on, hang on. We 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 we, we do. Goodness gracious, me, well, we do. I mean, I mean, but we, we've been, but I mean, the, the, the we've been told that we live on, on 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 a circular earth. We've been told that money is real. We've been told that we we live in the d- d- democracy when we don't. And you know, and so on and so forth. We we get told lies every single day through the, through the television. We are lied to. We are programmed um, from from start to finish. From the, we are owned by another entity, and we are told that we're not. And so that is an incredible lie. Agreed. Agreed. I was just saying that it's not. I mean, yeah, it's it's very very. Um, I, I I try to find the silver lining in that, and that is, look, you know, there's 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 love of a child, there's love of a spouse, there's there's things that are out there that are true. But you're absolutely right. Uh, there are a lot of lies, which is why with this, with the whole flat Earth scenario, I think is one of the few shining rays of hope in the conspiracy world, which is if this thing finally you know becomes revealed, then a lot of the darkness of the world goes away, which is uh, because, it, you know, it comes down to the creator standpoint. And that is, we all know that, uh, you know, the, the naughty and nice list, you know, from the Santa Claus, you know, myth, 
And that is, you know, you're supposed to do good things, but, you know, we don't often do good things because, you know, there's no proof that there's a naughty or nice list. But if there is a creator and this place was built and we find out that we're living in the structure, well, then all changes. And that is, would, are you actually, when it becomes real, when it becomes re, you know, very solid, something you can hang your hat on, do you still fight wars? Do you still exploit people? Uh, do you commit race crimes? Uh, sex crimes, uh, any any sort of crimes. Do you do anything malicious against another person if you know for a fact that someone is is looking over your shoulder? I'm not saying you're going to get struck down with a bolt of lightning, but if there's a scorecard on your life, are you really going to roll those dice and take the chance? And uh, I don't think so. Not not judging from what the astronauts did um, a few years back when when they were when they were asked under oath if they went to the moon or not. You know why why not? lie under oath. It's called perjury. We all know people that have done it. People get famous for doing it. We have an extensive legal system that handles it. But yet these astronauts wouldn't swear that they went to the moon. Why not? And that's because with the Apollo astronauts, I think they knew of the bigger picture, which was, uh, you know, that there is a creator, that there is intelligent design, there is a divine power. And even though they knew that, that they, you know, probably wouldn't die right then and there, you know why? Why take the chance? Uh, and if people think I'm kidding here that there's you know there's a, a, some morality left in the world. Think of the the stoplight scenario, at least over here in the states, and that is everyone know everyone has run a stoplight, you know, in their lives. It just happens. But once cameras were put on those same stoplights, you stopped running them. Why? Because you know you were afraid you were going to get caught. So why were you thinking about running it in the first place? And uh, it gets it gets stranger after that because you know, let's say that you know let's say you you're pretty sure the camera's broken. Let's say your friends told you, oh yeah, I drove through that thing eight times, and you know I I never got a ticket. It must be broken. Are you really going to take that chance and run it? Mm, maybe not. And that's that's what I'm hoping that this thing brings about that that, that we have the potential if it comes about. I I think this could fix uh, a lot of the problems we have in the world. I may be you know too optimistic i but, think that's uh, very optimistic i mean uh, you know I, we we have major issues on this planet of whatever it whether it's flat or round um yeah. and um you know this whole concept that 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 flat earth is going to solve our issues i think is, is not 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 solve but but definitely veer us away from the the cliff we're heading towards uh and i know again i'm i'm taking the 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 silver lining the the glass half full here but if you're all in the same community, do you still act the same way? Uh, you know, because there's a lot of questions. Think of think of it. You know, if if the the big five religions control eighty percent of the population of this world, those religions then become you know I hate to, so much to say it a, a lot stronger, a lot more powerful, a lot more relevant, and they would be. And I know religions have had their checkered past. And I'd hate to say that religions would become the new moral compass because, you know, there's abuses in every house of, of, of worship. But hey, why not? You know, why, why not give them a, a chance to do the right thing? And if they screw it up and, and we, you know, auger our civilization into the ground, well, you know, it's not like, you know, they didn't, they didn't have the, the chance to make it right. I'm just hoping that they would. Okay, so so let's wrap this up. That was, sure. It'd be really interesting, okay? Um, <laughs> and as you know, there's major political conversation going on at the moment between the Democrats and the Republicans and uh, who's going to be the next president of the United States of America. Um, yeah. You know, my, my point of view is I find Donald Trump very entertaining, but I ultimately think that it doesn't matter who gets in um, or when they get in, because the same policies are going to take place regardless. And if we're looking at the fact that we've been lied to about living on a flat earth, you know, what's your position? Do you even look at politics? I know Crow 777 I, doesn't. I do, but I do it from, I'm very cynical. I take the, the, the com United States um, comedian George Carlin's approach, and that is, uh, you know, he has very few, uh, what was it, guidelines, but one of the first is never, ever believe anything the government tells you. And when it comes to politics, yeah, the last American president that had any real power uh, was uh, uh, Dwight Eisenhower. 
because he was a five-star general and he was a military guy. I mean, and he had a lot of access to, you know, World War II. It wasn't that far in the rearview mirror. But to sum up the political system here, I, I try to say, because people will say, you know, it's the illusion of choice. And that is, yeah, you're going to, it's going to come down to Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, which is unbelievable because I've never seen a political race where people just hated both choices so much. It's like, really, that's our choices? Uh, but it comes down to the the billionaire argument because I I because I've never voted in my life, but I I do so deliberately because I say, look, your vote, at least in the United States, doesn't make a difference. And people say, oh no, you're 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 shutting the political process, and that's not right. And I go, okay, think of it this way: I'm a billionaire, all right? I'm a billionaire, and I'm gonna give a million dollars to a political party. Who do I give it to? And then, you know, people will say, well, you know, if you lean this way, you're going to go Republican. Or if you lean this way, you're going to go Democrat, blah, blah, blah. And they're going to debate about that for some time. And I'm going to go, no, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to give a million dollars to each party because I don't care who wins. All I care about is an audience and, a, and, a, and some sort of way to try to influence policy. Because the candidates don't care. There's no alliances there. You know, Hillary's not going to care if I give a billion to Trump and – I'm sorry, a million to Trump and, and vice versa. So I give a million to each party. Whoever wins, what does that million dollars buy me? It buys me lunches maybe twice a year with these people and their advisors and the people that write the speeches. And I get to go in and give my two cents. And if I give more money, I get to give more than two cents. And you're saying, what's your point? My point is that costs me millions of dollars to do that to just do that. And I actually get to influence policy. What does the average person on the street get to do? They get to do nothing. They are given the illusion of choice. Uh, and I'll steal from the matrix here. And that is if you're given the illusion of choice, most people will buy into it because they feel like even in some small way, they're making a difference. And you're not. The politicians have been chosen for decades now in the United States. Um, if not hundreds of years. That's and, right. That's uh, right. I mean, I, I used to think that JFK was the last true president, but even JFK was part of the system. So he, he was, but he, but unfortunately, he he was he was a lone wolf in some aspects. He had no allies. He, he for whatever reason, he decided he was going to buck the system. You know, to the and it was a long term problem. He was he was doomed. Uh, unfortunately, and so was his brother, and and so was Teddy. If, he, if Teddy would have run for president, it just wasn't going to be allowed to happen. Well, so, sorry. Then, and he also said that he was going to audit the Fed. Um, I mean, that's the only reason why I like Trump. He says he's going to audit the Fed. He says that he's going to give us the the uh, didactic twenty two pages from the nine eleven report, and he says he'll prosecute Hillary Hillary Clinton. And those two <laughs> things, I if I was going to vote, I'd vote for Trump. But either way, I don't think it matters. And when you're talking about the uh, the astronauts, that that if anyone's listening. Um, it's called Astronauts Gone Wild, and it's yep. very worthwhile um, checking that out. So, Mark, I know you've got a brilliant show with uh, pa pa Patricia Steer, haven't you? Yep. Called Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Patricia's a hot potato herself, um, and that's going really well. And, and how can people get in contact with you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you can either – oh, there's tons of different ways now. Um, the easiest way is to just go in any search engine, type in Flat Earth Clues, the uh, website, uh, the, right now the current website is enclosedworld.com. Patricia and I are actually going to be doing a daily show here real soon. Uh, the network, it's going to be called The Flat Earth Network, and we're going to be doing a daily show, uh, its own its, its own network thing, a subscription service. And I also do a show on Truth Frequency Radio called Strange World. That's once a week. And the book just came out called Flat Earth Clues. And there's apps and all sorts of fun stuff. I, it's tough to keep track of it at this point. Well, good stuff. I'd love to get you and uh, Patricia on the radio um, oh, yeah. here in Spain. That that would be fantastic um, yeah. because that would give a, a, a nice balance to the conversation. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, the, this conversation is raging on forward. And yeah. as you say, you are the tip of the spear. I don't know why yeah. Eric DeBay has got such a bee in his bonnet about other people. Uh. But um, I, I reckon just let him get, get let him get on yeah, with that. I guess exactly, exactly. Yeah. He'll he'll come, uh, hopefully he'll come around. Uh, we'll we'll find out. We will. All right, Mark. Thank you very very much for your time and take care. All of right. Yourself. Thank you. Cheers, buddy. Bye. Bye bye. Hey, I'm Herschel. Herschel thirty six. Thanks for listening to Truth Is Stranger Than Fiction on the Beat One Hundred Six FM. Did you like it? If so, give us a thumbs up 
And don't forget to subscribe, people! <laughs> Brought to you by JustFinishingRecords.co.uk Herschel 36, where truth is stranger than fiction.